So let's all open up InDesign. All right, let's open up InDesign. So as I mentioned earlier, uh, what we're going to focus on today is not so much, you know, when you're using InDesign, you shouldn't focus so much as putting or doing, p typing all of your, you know, you're not, you wouldn't type a paper on InDesign, okay? Uh, ideally, you would type a paper in Microsoft Word, and then if you wanted to create a really nice layout, you would then place it into InDesign. So that's kind of what we're going to focus on today. I've given everybody the Vitruvius document, so that has all of the text already on it, okay? So ideally, that's kind of the workflow that you would use when working with InDesign. Not to say that you wouldn't ever type, uh, type text on InDesign. You would certainly do that, but you wouldn't type, um, you know, paragraphs of text or, you know, or pages or essays in InDesign, okay? So we're gonna focus more about how to use InDesign in the terms of laying out documents, okay? So this becomes really useful for, yes, page design and general graphic design, but it comes really useful for someone who maybe uh, is gonna be focusing on like magazines, presentations, where you're actually going to be placing a lot of text, okay? So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go over to create a new document, all right? From there, we're gonna uncheck facing pages. We're gonna go ahead and leave this as a, as a letter, okay? So just general eight and a half by 11 works just fine. I'm gonna change, actually let's leave the margins on for now, because I'm gonna show you how to change them once you're in InDesign. So sh should you decide to change them. Other than that, everything else here looks just fine. We're gonna go ahead and hit okay, all right? So you can see here the margins that were on that initial prompt are reflected by this pink boundary. They really have no meaning. I think we've talked about printing margins a little bit. They have nothing to do with printing margins. They don't have anything to do with really anything. It's all a margin that's set by you depending on what it is that you're creating. If you want a four inch margin, you can set it to a four inch margin. Uh, that's completely up to you. So if you want to change the margins, maybe you have an idea in mind of what you're going to be typing and you actually like to see that visual boundary. Some people like to do that. Some people like to actually see the line on the paper that is telling them, do not cross that. So if you're one of those people, which uh, I very much am sometimes and sometimes I'm not. So if you want to change that, you can go over to layout. You can go to margins and columns. And then from there, you can adjust that. So for example, if I'm, ty if I'm typing like a, we'll say a legal document, which hopefully you're not doing in InDesign, but let's say you're doing something like that. Um, you might change this to, uh, let's say like a two inch margin on the top. And remember that the unit of measurement in InDesign is picas. Uh, I don't know the conversion off the top of my head, but if I just type in two inches, it will convert that to picas, okay? I'm gonna uncheck the link and I'm gonna make the top two inches, maybe the, the bottom is 1.5 in, oops, sorry. Didn't mean to hit the enter button. So we have the top is two inches, the bottom is one and a half. Maybe my left is 0.5 inches and my right is one inches because we have a binding, okay? So we can, we can add that, or maybe it's 1.5 inches. Okay, so we'll just say okay. And uh, that starts to give, actually that looks pretty excessive over here on the top, but you get the point. You know, you understand how to adjust your margins if needed. I personally, for this exercise, I am going to work with no margins. I, I typically have a pretty good eye for, for what I need. So I'm just gonna change these all to zero. I clicked on the link again so that if I change one, they all change together. All right, so I'm gonna hit okay. Notice that pink line is now on the outer perimeter of our, of our canvas or our workspace. I'm gonna right click up here in the corner of our rulers and I'm gonna click on inches so I can now more easily see that this is a eight and a half by 11 uh, document, okay? Is it eight and a half by 11? Oh yeah, because that's nine. I see how that's working. So it's now an eight and a half by 11 document. Okay, so we're going to focus today on using the text tool and how to uh, do some general layout with uh, various types of fonts in InDesign. Okay, so let's just zoom out just a little bit. Okay, and let's start 
with uh, placing a few different text boxes, okay? So I'm gonna go over to where it says T, T for text, and I am going to place a couple, um, what you guys probably are more familiar with as, um, as frames. These very much work just like frames, which we talked about last class, but they're used for text, okay? So I'm gonna create a text box, and then from there, yes, of course, I could just type away and I could type my document if I wanted to. But let's say that you have already typed the general document and you want to start to create a nice dynamic layout for the page that you're writing, okay? Maybe you're doing a little article for your school newspaper or something along those lines and maybe you typed it really quickly on, you know, on BART, okay? So what I would do is I am going to um, click on this text box like so and I'm gonna go over to file and then I'm gonna to go to place and then everybody should go on canvas you should be able to download that Vitruvius document okay if you're having troubles with that let me know a little bit later but I can see a lot of people have already found it so I'm gonna go find that document that I've already I've already written which of course I took out my thumb drive give me just one sec Okay, so I'm gonna find that document. I'm gonna to go to fall 2017, 6B. I'm gonna click on that Word file that I've already created. Okay, so I'm gonna click on that Word file and I'm gonna hit open. Okay, so some of you guys maybe, uh, I know Brian has already run into this problem here, where you get this message called missing font. So I purposely picked this document so that you guys will encounter this. It actually happens all the time. Uh, the reason being is that the Times New Roman f uh, font in Microsoft Word might be a little bit different than the Times New Roman font in InDesign. They probably, they're usually copyright ver or reasons. So Microsoft Word calls theirs Times Roman Bold and Times Roman Regular, whereas InDesign actually calls it Times New Roman Bold and Times New Roman Regular. So if you get this message, uh, this is what you're gonna do. And if you look over on the left, you have all this orange highlighting it's telling you that you need to address this issue for all of that text. So as I, as I continue to address this issue, you'll notice that that kind of salmon colored highlighter starts to go away. So I'm gonna click on find font, okay? And then I'll go up to my first one that says Times Roman. And then down here at the bottom, it says replace with what font family? I'm gonna go ahead and replace it with the with the uh, InDesign version, which is t -t 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 times New Roman, and then font style is going to be regular, okay? So I'm gonna go ahead and click on change all. So it will change all of the text that was originally times Roman to times New Roman, okay? So, and then I'm going to click on times Roman bold, do the same thing. I've already selected times New Roman, so I'm just gonna change the font style, which we talked about today, to bold. Okay, and I'll click on change all, and then I'm gonna click on done, okay? So now our text that we imported into InDesign is now using uh, nice true type font families uh, that will work really well for this document, okay? So a couple things to look at um, with our text box, okay? If we go down to the very bottom, you're gonna notice this little plus sign, okay? You can see it right over here, okay? Everyone see that little red plus? Okay, can anybody guess what that little red plus means? Yes? It means you have too much, uh, too much text in there. Yeah, there's too much text, so there's more text, okay? So you're not displaying all of the text that you placed into that text box, okay? So there's, fortunately, there's some really nice ways to, uh, to change that. And if you select, let's just kind of look at the text box that we have before we start to add others. If you take the text box that we have, it works very much just like the frames that we learned last class, okay? So I can uh, make the frame smaller, I can make it wider, and it will continue to adjust that text into that frame to always constantly fill it, okay? So let's make it back to what we just had, about like that. And then from there, I'm going to go over to my the T, and I'm gonna create another text box. Okay, I'm gonna make another column right next to it. Okay, notice these little green leaders to the left of that, uh, to the left of the text box that I'm creating that's telling me when you see those little leaders pop up that the spaces between uh, the two text boxes are equivalent, so that's good. I like that, I know it's all proportionate and even. And then from there, I'm gonna unclick 
and we've now created a new text box. Okay, so let's go back. I'm going to click on my little arrow and let's go back to where we see this little red X. If I click two times on that red X, whoops, sorry, I'm going to click once. Okay, so if I click once on that little red X, you'll notice that I now get a little, a little excerpt of all of my text. Okay, and then from there, I'm going to click on the next text box. Okay, and you'll see that it then fills up that text box with the next grouping of text. So if you look down at the bottom of the first one that we created, you'll notice that it flows right up into the second one. Okay, and you can, creep, you can keep creating more and more text boxes and continue to add that text uh, until you are done. Okay, so for the assignment that we're working on today, you only need to create the first page. And what you should focus on when you're creating the first, the first chapter is all of the little details. So you should begin to look at text hierarchy, okay? So you guys can start to work with uh, the different font sizes. You can work with the different font, uh, the different fonts themselves. You can begin to work with the color and you can start to create a really nice visual, visually pleasing uh, first page of this document, okay? You're gonna continue to see the little red X because the, the chapter is you know many, many pages long, but you only need to focus on the first page. Don't worry about if the text just ends with a, you know, a random word, okay? But let's kind of look at how these text box work, okay? You'll notice that if I click on one of them and let's say that I start to manipulate the sizes of them, notice how it continues to wrap that text from box to box, okay? So as I'm continuing to design what's gonna happen in my sheet and I move these around, it will continue to move that text from box to box. Yeah, it's a pretty cool little, it's a pretty cool feature. And I know for probably the first three or four years of using InDesign, I actually never, I never knew that. I, until I started teaching the class and I started to read more about, you know, all the, the littler details of the software, okay? So this starts to work really well. You can make either of these as small or as large as you want, and it will continue to wrap the text accordingly, okay? So I'm going to, I'm actually gonna leave it in two columns as we continue to move forward, okay? Let's make these a little bit bigger. All right, so I can make these a little bit bigger. Maybe I want to, uh, I'm actually going to add a separate text box just for the title. Actually, let's do this. Let's move this one to the top. I'm gonna to make this one nice and small. Okay, so that's gonna be my chapter one. I'm gonna move this one over. Let's get these aligned. Okay, so the reason why I actually kind of, I moved these ones over versus just creating a new one and putting in the top, because as I move it from box to box, it's gonna go in the order of how you place them. Okay, so again, I'm gonna click on the text box. I'm gonna create one more, like so. Click on the little, click on my arrow. I'm gonna click on the red X. Okay, click on that second box. And now I can start to manipulate the individual components of that text. So let's look at some of those things that we might do. Let's make this a little bit smaller. Let's maybe bring this down a little bit too. I'll match that. I'm gonna make this text box much bigger, okay? Notice that it continues to kind of wrap, but as I continue to uh, adjust or make some of these adjustments, uh, it will continue to fall into place. So maybe it, let's start to establish a little bit of hierarchy amongst our title or our headings and our subheadings. So let's make the chapter one, maybe we make that about 24, maybe even a little bit bigger, let's go 30. Okay, that looks good. Okay, let's change that to a more bold font. So maybe we pick something like, let's pick, let's see, this is always kind of a tough thing to do. Let's pick this one right here. Okay, that looks nice. It's actually kind of a contemporary, a contemporary version of the text of Vitruvius. It's kind of, kind of backwards because Vitruvius is very ancient, but that's okay. I'm gonna, let's make that a little bit bigger actually. Chapter one, notice that as I made chapter one a little bit bigger, the text from below then wrapped to the bottom. Um, I can then continue to manipulate the different text in the, in the body. 
okay? Does everyone kind of understand how that's working? Okay, that makes sense. Any questions right now? Okay, good. So some other adjustments that you might make, okay, before we move on to uh, character styles, uh, let's look at how we might start to make some of the adjustments that we learned about in the lecture. So let's look at how we could adjust uh, the kerning, uh, et cetera, et cetera. Okay, so let's select chapter one and let's look at all of the different adjustments that we can make up here in our contextual ribbon, okay? So we've talked about font, we know where that is. Below that here, you can see that Aris Bold ITC only one only has one font style, okay? And that's regular, so that's the designed font. Over here on the right, um, I'm sorry, actually over here on the right, if you continue to go to the right, you can change your font size, okay? Everyone, that should be pretty clear with everyone, okay? So that's gonna be your font size. Below that is going to be your kerning, okay? Kerning being the space between the different letters. So this will be more easily demonstrated if I go down to the bottom here. I'm going to select, okay? I'm going to select maybe this first paragraph, okay? Remember that kerning is the distance between the bottom of your letters and the top of the lowercase letters on the line below. Okay, so ideally, if I have 16 point font and I change the kerning spacing to 16, that spacing is gonna be exactly the height of what? The, lower to X. the lowercase letters, yes, the X. So if I change that to 16, which I can just change it to whatever I want if you don't see the number that you want, you'll notice that uh, de by default, if you click on auto, which I actually recommend, it usually works out really well if you just select auto, but by default, it's always a few points above what the font size is, okay? What the reason why that is, because it gives you a little bit of room when you have ascenders and descenders so that they don't collide, okay? So if I change this to 16, okay? It still works pretty well, but if you notice like the F and the Y, they start to get a little close. They start to, you know, they get close to clashing a little bit. So anything below um, matching what the font size is will start to get a little a little hairy. So if I go maybe to like 10, you'll see that they start to collide and it starts to get a little jumbled and becomes difficult to read. So let's, let's just leave that on auto for now. All right, so if you look to the right, let's go through some of our other our other options here. Here you can change all of the all the font to all uppercases. Below that is going to be all uh, all of our smaller lower or I'm sorry, all of our smaller cap capitalized letters. Okay, so remember there's a reason why we do that. We have if you don't want to place quite as much emphasis on the text, uh, you can still choose. Um, all lower or smaller size capital letters. When you, when you choose that, notice that it still has greater emphasis on the first letter of the sentence so that you still have some of the, um, some of the features of how you would typically write and type, okay? So if you want to create a, uh, what do you call these little things? What's like the little, oh, a little prefix or a prefix? Is that the, the name for the little the little two? Superscript. Prescript, that's, that's or su subscript? Superscript. Superscript, yeah. So like if you're gonna do something like, you know, six squared, uh, that's an option right here. So you can turn that into a superscript and then you have a subscript, right? Is that that word? I, don't, I, I honestly never click those. I'm never, I'm never writing pages, but I just wanna at least let you guys know that they're there. You then have your underlining. You then have your, if you wanna cross or put a, uh, a line through your text, that's an option, okay? So you see this a lot in legal documents. I know when I type up a contract for work and then it goes off to our attorney, they read it, they cross out all the things that, you're, that they say you're crazy for putting in there. That's why you might do that, okay? So what you actually do for your paper today is completely up to you. You probably won't use half the things that we're talking about, but I want to I want you to at least know that they're there. Okay. So continuing to move on, let's back out just a little bit. Next, we uh, we have the ability to adjust the spacing between the letters. Okay. Remember we talked about that. So if I zoom in, actually let's go up to our title this time. If I place my cursor between the T and the E, and I start to make this 
uh, at a negative size, I can start to actually uh, clash these. That might be actually what you wanna do. That could be a design decision that you ultimately might make. In fact, our logo for our office makes the letters touch just, just barely. So it actually could be um, a desired effect. Okay, so I can continue to, to work with that if I want to. Okay, uh, if I wanted to actually select all of them, you should be able to do them all at the same time. So negative, whoops. Okay, so never mind. you can't do it by selecting. You actually have to place the cursor between the two letters and then from there you can start to make those really fine tuned adjustments. Okay, so let me just put this back to the way that I had it. Actually, I could kind of like that. I'm gonna leave it. Let's let these touch just a little bit. It's kind of retro. Okay, chapter one, all right? So next below that, if we want to uh, adjust the spacing of the actual of the actual words. I think if I let's see if I select maybe a little bit of this text. Come on now, and I start to make these adjustments. Notice that it starts to adjust the uh, the overall individual spacing between all of the letters together. Okay, so notice that this text is just getting wider and wider, and the same amount of text is just extending from line to line. So. This is uh, the example that I gave earlier when we were talking about. Let me find the, uh, oh, I pulled out my thumb drive. When we were talking about uh, tracking, okay? So I'm gonna make this zero again. That's probably not what you're gonna wanna do, but it's an option should you want to do that. Um, next, we have the ability to change the height of an individual letter. So let's say I wanted to make the C a little bit bigger, I could start to do that. But notice that when I do that, yes, it, what it actually does is it makes it taller, but actually starts to go below the baseline as well. So there's kind of a rhyme and a reason for why you might choose all of these options, okay? Maybe we make it really dramatic. Let's do like 130. Notice that, actually I take that back. The bottom actually does not really go below the baseline, but the top will continue to get taller and taller. But all it's doing is actually just stretching the letter, okay? So let's make that back to zero, or zero, or 100 actually. Okay, next to the right of that, you have uh, the ability to stretch a character, okay? So maybe you wanna make this like 130, and maybe you also make this 130, okay? Technically, I could have just probably just increased the size of the font there. That would be equivalent to the same thing. But you do have the option to uh, stretch in height and in width, okay? Next, you have the ability to italicize or to do a custom italicize, okay? So if I want to make it kind of a backwards italicize, I can do that. That's probably a little bit more typical to what you're used to seeing, okay? So those are just some of the options that you have uh, up in your contextual ribbon when it comes to adjusting the font, okay? To the right of that, just one more before we move on to character styles. To the right of that, you have the ability to change the font color. So if I change the font color, that will, that is going to be the, uh, the first option up here. That's gonna be changing the font color. If you want to add um, a stroke to that so that's going to be the outer boundary around your text you can change that right here so if I change that to black okay you can't really see it right now what I actually need to do is change the width of the stroke why am I not seeing that uh, let's see I think there's actually another place to actually define that we'll do that actually when we go over to character styles Ah, there we go. I just got what I was looking for. Uh, yes, I do think so. Let's look at how to do that here in just a second. So here I just changed the stroke of those characters to black. Okay, so I selected that. If you're wanting to add a little bit more emphasis, you could change that to black. That adds a little bit more pop. The reason why a lot of times you would do that is if you're placing color text over other color text, 
um, that black outline starts to define the boundaries and the edges of the text uh, really nicely, okay? So what's actually really nice, when I adjusted the kerning, notice how it actually really combined all of the letters. And when I added, when I changed the color, it continued to allow that to flow really nicely, okay? So that might be an effect that you are ultimately interested in. So you were asking, could you do uh, fonts and or other patterns? Yes, you could do gradients, which would be uh, this one right here. You can click on this button and you could go over to, I think it's this button right here. Oh, that's gonna be creating a new, uh, a new color. Let's come back to that, okay? Because I actually haven't done that in a long time, but I'll show you, I'll show you how to do that here in a few minutes. But it is an option. Uh, it's actually, um, actually I take that back. It may not be an option in InDesign. It is for sure an option in Illustrator. Because when we're in Illustrator, we're not so much focusing on the layout, we're focusing on the design of the text. So we'll actually have an assignment where we actually get down to the nitty gritty of, of really adjusting all of the fonts to make really creative, uh, fun fonts. So. Up here, yeah. oh, other than what you see here in this in this yeah. in this little menu. So if you hold down Shift and you double click on the T, that will open up your color picker menu. Okay, so maybe you want like a really bright uh, yellow. You can kind of click on the various colors. You can manipulate them here on the sidebar to the tones and the different color spaces, and ultimately find what you want. A really cool thing, and we'll actually do this a little bit later. If you go onto like a website like Sherwin Williams, for example, and you go find a color, uh, we're like, we'll actually look at a couple websites that help you do this later on in the semester as well. But uh, this is actually something that I do in my office all the time. I'll go to Sherwin Williams and I'll actually go through their really nice color index and I'll find a color that I really, really like. If you click on the information tab for that color, it'll give you an RGB value. So, for or even if you're in like, uh, Home Depot and you have that little color swatch on the back. There's probably an RGB value It'll say something like you know 26 45 115 Okay, and that gives you that really nice royal blue So if you actually find a color on one of these websites You can just look at that RGB value punch it into InDesign or Illustrator or Photoshop and you can get that exact color you can also copy down the um, the hexa the hexadecimal value which uh, is, doesn't show here in design, but it shows in Photoshop. It has the ability to punch in that number. Okay, so from there, sorry, I didn't do anything because I didn't have anything selected. You can change any of these colors and it will change the color of that text. Okay, so any questions about any of, uh, uh, with our upper ribbon here? You can continue to explore some of the other options. I went through about 50 to 75% of them, but there are more. If you guys, actually if you go up to this little button up here where it says essentials and you click down on this little arrow, what you're gonna wanna do is click on the button that says typography. And I'd probably actually do that before you really start doing anything. Uh, I probably should have mentioned that as one, of the, as one of the first things, but that gives you all of the preset uh, adjustments when dealing with typography, okay? So notice that if you go to essentials, that gives you things like pages, layers, links. Those are like the most critical things that you deal with in InDesign. But you can adjust what you see on your right vertical ribbon by going up over here to essentials. And you can click on the one that pertains to what we're doing, which is typography. And it'll give us all of the different tools that relate to, to typography. Another way to do that is by going over to window, I can then go over and I can click on uh, any of these options, like uh, let's find one that's not on here, effects, okay? If I click on effects, it then adds it to my ribbon over here on the right, and you can kind of customize that uh, as you wish, okay? So that, again, one more time, just in case you missed that, if you click on, uh, if you're not seeing a lot of the editing tools that you want, all right, like stroke is a really good one. So remember when we were editing the uh, the stroke around the text here. Right now we don't have too many options besides just changing the color. But if I actually click on the button that says stroke, that allows us to one, edit the size. Notice that that uh, the thickness of that black line around the text is now getting bigger. So it gives us the opportunity to make that adjustment. 
okay? You can also tech, uh, change the line style, okay? Which is, actually, I take that back. You can't, you can't adjust the line style on text, but if you were to actually draw a line and you were to click on that line, you could turn it into a dash line or, or various other different types of line styles, okay? Questions about any of that? Okay, let's continue. So the last thing we're gonna talk about before I set you guys loose is we are going to talk about character styles and paragraph styles. And the reason why InDesign uses character styles and paragraph styles is as you guys start to do a lot of different layouts, you're gonna run into all of these various presets that you really, really like. So for example, let's edit this first paragraph. Let's say that we want to start to manipulate some of, of uh, the text in this paragraph. So what I would do before I do that is I am going to go click on paragraph styles and I'm gonna click on this little button on the right hand side here that looks like a little leaf that's turning up. I'm gonna click on that and I'm gonna create a new paragraph style. What this allows me to do is change things like the font, all of the spacing, the kerning, all of those tiny, tiny little details and I'm gonna create a preset, okay? And I'm gonna save that. And then in the future, if I'm creating documents, all I gotta do is just import that paragraph style. And when I select my text, I click on the paragraph style and it automatically changes all of those tiny little details for you so that you don't have to go through and do it every single time or click on every single paragraph uh, and create that. So I am going to double click on paragraph style and we're gonna get the paragraph style dialog box. Okay, and then from here, I can start to make all of those little adjustments. Okay, I'm just gonna go through a couple of those. Okay, you guys can actually look at uh, all the various forms. I'll, I'll show you a couple of the, of the really important ones. Okay, so let's move this over just a little bit. Okay, so the first one, paragraph style name, maybe we say body paragraph, okay? So what is this based on? Uh, we're actually gonna leave that as normal. We're gonna leave all of these as is. Next, we're gonna click on basic character formats. So this allows you to uh, adjust all of the individual character characteristics, okay? I would recommend actually leaving these alone, okay? Because we're actually going to set these up in the, uh, in the different character styles, okay? Which we'll do in a second. Right now, we're gonna kind of more focus on the more macro scale of what we're doing right now. We're not gonna focus on the individual things, but let's say we want to add something like, uh, we want to adjust the vertical scale. Maybe we adjust this to 120%. Okay, maybe I, or that's the horizontal. Let's adjust the vertical to also 120%. I'm gonna go and look at the indentation. Maybe the left indentation is something like 0.25, the first indentation is also 0.25. I'm just kind of making this all up just for the time being. You'll actually see what it does here in just a second. Um, maybe I want to go over to hyphenations. Maybe I actually want to, hi I want to add some rules to my paragraph to where I want to hyphenate words with at least, we'll say, eight, eight letters, okay? This is probably actually gonna look kind of ugly here in a little bit, but It'll make sense once I actually make uh, make the adjustments to why we do this, as soon as I hit okay. All right, let's look at, let's look at, I'm trying to find a really good one. No, let's look at drop cap. So does anybody know what a drop cap is? Whenever you see, you see this a lot in like old, like old pieces of text when you see like the really big uh, the really big one, okay? You might see something like, draw this on the board. You might see like one, and then you see, you know, once upon a time, you know, there was a prince, and then it wraps down here. So you have those, uh, those really big numbers. So let's say I want that to be a consistent style in all of my paragraphs, okay? So I can say, how many lines do I want that drop cap to span? Let's say two. And let's say the number of characters, I'm gonna leave that as, as one, okay? 
So let's just go ahead and sit, hit OK and let's see uh, what happens to that, okay? Notice that I have an indentation here, okay? Notice that I have an indentation on the left-hand side and I have that drop cap, okay? So I'm, I'm starting to add an overall style uh, to the entire page, okay? But what's really nice about this is now I can go through and I can select all of my text and I can click on that body paragraph character style that I created and it will assign that to everything that you do, okay? And let's just say by chance, you know what? I'm not really happy with the way that this is looking. It's close, but it's not right. I can then click on body paragraph and I can go and start to make some of those uh, adjustments. Maybe I wanna turn off the hyphenation. Maybe I want to adjust the indentation, okay? Maybe I don't want the left hand, uh, left hand side or the first line to be indented. I change that to zero and I hit okay. It will then go and continue to make the adjustments to the entire document that you've applied that character or that paragraph style to, okay? So those are gonna be paragraph styles, all right? Last thing before I let you guys loose is let's talk about character style. So now we're going to focus more on the macro details of this uh, of this chapter, okay? So let's say we want to go and start to, um, we want to add some emphasis to these bold words, okay? I want these bold words to uh, be a little bit different than the rest of the paragraph, okay? So let's make a character style. So let's click on character styles and let's go new. And I'm gonna change the name of this character style to bold text, okay? And then from there, I can start to apply um, some different variations of that. So maybe I want to uh, change the font a little bit. Maybe I want that bold text to be something that pops a little bit more. So maybe it's Britannic bold. We change the font style. It's already bold, so I don't need to change it to bold. But maybe we increase the text size a little bit. Maybe it's uh, 18, so it's two points uh, larger than the rest of my text. Okay. Maybe I want. Uh, let's not a. Uh, this looks good. Let's go ahead and just leave this as is. Okay, that looks good. Maybe I want to change the character style to a different color. Okay. Maybe I want it to be red. Okay, maybe I want to underline it. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and click on underline all. Okay, or underline on. And then I'm gonna go ahead and hit okay. All right, so after I've created that character style, I can now then select that bold word and I can click on bold text. Notice that it just applied all of those uh, styles that I just implemented to that bold text. Okay, and I can go through and I could do the same thing to all of that bold text in my in my paragraph, okay? And the nice thing about when you apply those character styles is if you wanna make some adjustments, because it will take some practice, you'll do a few and it's not gonna look right and you're gonna keep refining it as you go through, okay? You say, yeah, you know, that red's just a little bit too much, I can go through, I can change that back to black, hit okay, and it'll automatically make that adjustment to all of the bold text or all of the text that I've applied that character style to in my document, okay? Does that make sense? Does that sound pretty good? It starts to really make the process of creating a layout really, really efficient. And as you start to uh, put some time and some effort into creating really nice paragraph and character styles, you can save them and you can start to use them in your future documents, okay? You can start to uh, for example, I could uh, save this, bring it into another document. I can drag and drop it into another InDesign file, and I could you continue to use those character styles. Okay, so by no means really did what I create is not the most visually appealing thing, but hopefully that will allow you guys to all start to create a more dynamic layout. Okay, so. I'll go ahead and call it quits there. I'll actually probably spend about five or 10 more minutes and actually making this a little bit more visually appealing. Um, and you guys can look up at the screen if you want to. But so with that said, go ahead and start exercise 11, okay? So we'll continue to work on assignment two. 
start working on it, exercise 11, whatever you need to work on is okay with me. But your goal for this should be to make the most visually appealing first page of Vitruvius's first chapter, okay? So no need to make more than one page unless you really, really want to, okay? So as soon as you're done with that, you would then go up to File, Adobe PDF Presets. We're gonna export that as a PDF. Save this to your thumb drive. Call this Exercise 11, Vitruvius. Vitruvius, okay? And I'll hit Save. And I'll hit OK. And hit OK. And you'll now be able to submit that to Canvas. Okay? Any questions at all about typography? Are you going to post your, your uh, the lecture or the video? Or post, both? Post your lecture to the files? Yes. Yeah. Yep. I'll do that right now. Yeah, no. Sorry, I thought I did that this morning, but I guess I didn't. Yep, let me do that for you right now.